Okay, so my name is Tim Capelli. I'm the lead for technology enhanced learning at the University of Huddersfield. I work in nursing and uh, my colleague with me today is Hayley. Uh, she will do the demo of the thing you meet her later and she's the instructional one of the instructional designers at the university and, and we work together on this with academics and I'm going to take you through what we've done hopefully. So. There we go. So give you a bit of background, our Department of Nursing has a twice yearly intake of around 700 students, so it's a fairly big um, cohort of, of students. The, the escape room we designed um, was part of a 120 hour simulated placement and it had very much a focus on team building, and leadership and we felt an escape room activity, given what people have said in this morning sessions as well around team building, fitted really nicely with this. The activity had to be self-contained, repeatable, because we did this a number of times with, with different cohorts of students. It had to be scalable. Sometimes we only had sort of 50 students, sometimes we had up to sort of four, 500 students, and it had to be delivered wholly online. Um, and it was very much based on an existing teaching activity that we'd done in previous years around infection control. So we took something that, that already existed. The, we started with our loan outcomes, which are there, um, always good practice in, in design. The challenges we faced, as I said, we had to do it wholly online using familiar and intuitive technology. We, we didn't have time to get the students to learn a new technology or, or you know, give them um, anything unfamiliar. Uh, it needed to be simultaneously accessible by up to 400 students. So we in terms of support and, and in terms of access, we needed something that was, was scalable. It had to be inclusive of all four fields. We have four fields of nursing, adult, mental health, child and learning disabilities. So we, whatever we did had to be con had to be relevant to, to, to that field. We only had six months to create this, so um, it was a very tight time frame when we, we started this and we had as always no budget. Um, so we used technologies that were either free to use or or we already had. Um, Jenny's talk this morning was very interesting because about learning theories and we did base this very much on learning theories on simulation because that's what we're familiar with and, and it sort of fitted into the similar placement but that idea of briefing and debriefing was was really key to this and blended learning because we were mixing synchronous and asynchronous um, activities with the students so we wanted to sort of pull up best principles and learning theories from those. So this was the design process we went through. Um, I'm, I'm flicking through these but I'll, I'll give you more information. So we set up a working group and the, the importance of that was that we had a mix of people so we had subject matter experts who knew about infection uh, control, we had academics who knew about teaching and learning uh, and we had myself and Haley who knew about the technology and, and pedagogy. Um, so we confirmed the learning outcomes, we, de we decided on the scenario, uh, we chose our technology based on the learning outcomes and the scenario. Um, as it says there, it had to be intuitive, easy to use and accessible. Um, and we chose ThinkLink, which we'll demo in a minute. Um, we may then made a list of the, the puzzles and the activities based on the learning outcomes that we needed the students to do in order to to meet the learning outcomes. And we turn those into activities and puzzles for the students. We then designed, created and, and collated all those assets. So uh, Haley and I spent quite a long time building these puzzles together in various pieces of technologies and then stitching them all together in ThinkLink. Then, and this is really important, and then this also goes back to what Jenny was, was talking about this, this um, morning, an escape room activity on, doesn't stand alone. To be a real learning activity and a real learning process, it needs to fit within a series of activities that, that sort of top and tail the learning, so uh, the escape room, so that the students get something from it. So this is our fit of the puzzles to the learning out that what, what we wanted the students to do. So each of the top boxes in blue are things that the students needed to know about infection control. This was very much based around how to control the spread of an infection, carry out the correct procedures, do the right things in order to, to stop that spread of the infection. 
So we mapped each of these things that the, our subject matter expert on infection control said, these are the things the students need to know. We devised a series of puzzles and matched those together. So we're matching the, the learning. So they're not doing things for the sake of doing it. We're, you know, it's very important that they're learning something and taking away something from this activity. As I said, um, the escape room doesn't stand on its own. So this is how we set it up. We, we started with a briefing session, which is making sure the students knew what they had to do. We give them prep material on RBLE, which is Brightspace, to say, to give them a chance to practice in the in the in ThinkLink. So they had a go at it. Um, we also had a synchronous um, meeting where we, we talked through what they had to do, answer any concerns, because the students get concerned about anything new. Um, tell them about their groups. They also get concerned about what group I'm in. Um, we give them chance to as they prepare by going through material on, on our VLE. We then set up the escape room. So they did this simultaneously. So there's no spoilers in terms of one group doing it first and then another group telling them the answers. They all did it simultaneously. Uh, so they go and we divide them into groups of around about eight students. Um, each group was timetabled as um, a Teams meeting. So they all follow the link in their timetable automatically went into the Teams meeting uh, with the rest of their group and then they all followed the instructions to do that. So they were all separate in groups and doing it independently. And Haley and I would support each of those groups across. Um, well, Haley will show you the, the, the chat function that we put into the escape room, but we were also monitoring it through uh, Teams chat, which was <laughs> It takes some doing to monitor up to 20 odd groups at any given time, um, but it's actually achievable and, and work really, really well. And, and the chat actually gave us some good feedback, which I'll show you later. Uh, then, um, and this was a really important, we did a debrief session. The, the, the power of using different um, technologies like Teams and like ThinkLink and the H5P we used as well. We were able to capture data um, and feed that back into the debrief session, which was usually only about an hour after they completed it. We were to gather that data, turn it into little graphs and say, this is how you did. As a cohort, this is how you've done. Look, this team won and this team, you know, these teams with their name names came, you know, were slower, but actually this is how you've done as a cohort. These are your gaps in your knowledge. These are the things you've done well. And, and we could talk about that, okay? And then we asked them to do a reflective activity. So this particular escape room was one of three escape rooms we actually devised in this simulated placement. So they went around this cycle three times uh, and we, we built a little app which allowed them to allocate, to find out what their team role was and come up with an action plan as to how they could improve their, their um, participation in the team, which I felt was really important. So I'm going to hand over to um, Haley at that point. So we will demo the actual escape room for you. Just make sure I'm oh, OK, you can all hear me. Um, so this is a quick demo. It's just going to be five to ten minutes, not very long at all. Um, the students took anywhere up to an hour, sometimes a little bit more. Some of the activities were quite difficult, um, but we did plan that that way. Um, we thought it was quite funny to see them <laughs> not struggle, but like really get challenged by this. Um, so as you can see, we've used uh, 360 images that we used with our camera. This was inside an actual care home. We got some permissions for just to add to that authentic authenticity of the setting. Um, again, students will have done a quick demo on ThingLink beforehand, so they kind of know the basics of how to move around, how the buttons work, how the hotspots work. Um, and I'm just going to show you some of the puzzles we did, um, the kind of layout of our of our escape room. So it included some written instructions that were on our VLE, but then we also put into the escape room. We've also got the audio version of those. Um, right at the beginning, we have um, our kind of puzzle system. We used another soft piece of software called Flippity and embedded it into this. So they have 12 puzzles to unlock. Um, so if they click on that, let's be group one. Um, they've got 12 questions all around different areas of infection control, such as staff PPE, this one's about symptomatic patients, floor plan restrictions, laundry, all that sort of thing. Um, and they go around the care home looking at all the different clues, looking in the different rooms to find the answers to those. Um, also within the lobby, we did have 
I think it's been removed now because it's timed itself out, um, a, like a phone function. So they could phone virtually into a chat room where me and Tim were on the chat supporting. We were also, as Tim said, supporting on Teams. So any questions they had about how to navigate um, ThingLink or about the puzzles themselves or where to find different things, we could give them clues as they were going along. But I'll show you some of our rooms we had. Yeah. So we have, this is the manager's office of the care home. And as you can see, we've added lots of different things. ThingLink allows you to embed plenty of things. So we've got official guidelines of infection control, which students could use to read through to find clues. If, for example, they wanted to find something about laundry, they could then navigate to that within the document. Um, we've got things that we made, such as staff lists, patient lists on there, um, phone numbers to ring infection control, to ring HR, to ring patient families, um, as well as some smaller kind of traditional escape game clues where they would have to put dates in to find passwords and things like that. Um, ThingLink also has um, the scenario things you can add in. So we use that to make Ooh, different kinds of activities. So this one is a sequencing activity. Oh, sorry, let's try that again. So this is about hand hygiene. If it's going to work, there we go. So for this particular activity, it's a sequencing one in what order you wash your hands. And again, the student knowledge and if they needed to Google it or like look through the documents, they could drag that, submit the right answer. And if they got the right answer, they'll get a code or they'll get um, one of the, the answers for the padlock. And then they could share that with their group and start to unlock those padlocks. So lots of different puzzles we have. Um, again, this is one about emailing patient relatives, which would be another step. Um, in this scenario that you would have to do if you were in charge of a care home. We have all sorts of um, floor plans. This is the most tricky um, puzzle we had, I think, and I think the one we got the most uh, questions about in the support chat because students were, were really, really challenged by this. But it's a nice challenge. It, you know, you had to put what would you do in each specific room? Would you close it? Would you clean it? Um, so as you can see, there's lots and lots of stuff going on there. So they had um, a lot of fun trying to crack that one. Um, I'll show you some of our other rooms. So this is a patient room and the questions are puzzled in here are based around uh, resident care and what you would do in that situation. Um, for example, this is where would you put different items within a patient room? What would you lock in a cupboard? What would you put on a side table? What wouldn't be there at all? We had questions around spillages. And again, there's documentation hidden within uh, some of these rooms where you could find the right answers to these. And again, if they get all the answers right, they'll get some sort of code or some answer at the end. Um, some stool sample things there where they had to they had to do several steps to find a find a code, phone a number, and then finally get to this final page. Um, and then we also put a laundry room in there and plenty of things in here too. Again, these are quite contextualized around laundry procedures, which are really important um, in infection control scenarios. So things about what what staff should wear, um, how patient laundry should be sorted, what kind of bags they should use, um, which rooms should go into an enhanced wash cycle. And again, students would have to base that knowledge on this particular care home. So we'd already given them some information or they'd, they'd have found it out like some particular rooms needed that enhanced wash because they were the ones who were symptomatic. We also embedded lots of different documents um, which did give you them clues to, you know, all those 12 padlocks. So all about washing, um, washing cycles and cleaning routines. We had this scenario puzzle based on different cleaning routines where you would interview a cleaner um, and not all of them were right and they could um, find out well why is this person not right well Jane said here we need to vacuum the residence rooms and that wouldn't be correct in that scenario because that wouldn't be uh, the procedure so again that's based on that knowledge um, of infection control we had some nice puzzles in here that they could uh, you know piece together find some symbols and find the codes and correspond that to I think that with this one and then get the numbers for that so it, it 
it is a lot of puzzles and I know it seems a lot and I'm going through them very quickly, uh, but students did have like an hour for this. Um, so it was plenty of time for them to kind of piece all these together, um, find the 12 questions, find the 12 answers and eventually answer those puzzles. Um, they did it in lots of different ways. There wasn't one specific way that we, we told them to do it. Uh, as Tim was saying, they all accessed teams together. So they were all talking um, together. Some groups decided that one person would share the thing link screen and they would all talk and go through it together. A lot of, the, a lot of them accessed it separately. So they, they split up the padlocks. So maybe groups you know, took on two or three padlocks each, went away to find those answers, came back at the end and they discussed why, why they got those answers. Um, and then we could see almost in real time when groups were submitting those answers. So when you complete the flip tier and all 12 padlocks are broken, um, it was Tim who would get an email and an Excel sheet to say that it had been completed. Um, and I think that's um, a very whistle stop tour of the demo. Um, if you want to yeah. head back to you, Tim. Thanks, Hayley. That's great. Uh, I'll just go back to showing my very quickly. Um, so, um, don't want to do that. Yeah, so we did some feed, we do feedback on this obviously all the time, and we have actually used some of the, the specific feedback to tweak it slightly, particularly around the floor puzzle, because as Haley said, that was very, very challenging. It used to be two floors, and because of the feedback we had, we reduced it to one one floor because it, it's very challenging. Um, but you'll see the red, this particular, uh, you know, like a chart thing, uh, we asked them five or six questions. Um, the students love it, basically. They get really, they really enjoy it. They, they see the value of it, both from a teamwork point of view, but also from understanding infection control. Um, at the debrief, we always have that infection control specialist who joins us and talks about the importance of each thing they've done and goes through it in quite a lot of detail so that, that that's reinforcing the learning. So we talk about why hand washing is important, why with no virus you shouldn't use alcohol gel, uh, you should use soap and water and, and all those sort of, sorts of details. So it's it's really very interactive. The students get involved, but also the, the learning. So they, they really enjoy it. Um, we go back to the previous one. Um, this is some um, comments we get from the student. Um, and, it, and it's interesting because we've talked a lot about accessibility and that bottom right feedback in the sort of orangey um, bubble is re I really like that piece. We got that very early on. Uh, and that's a student who has dyslexia uh, and she really enjoyed this particular puzzle because of the way her, her mind works and because of the, the, the different type of activity it gave her a chance to, to show her strengths, she said. Um, so that, that's really important. Um, you know, when you're thinking about escape rooms, it does give people the chance to show their, their, their strengths and skills in a different way. OK, uh, so finally, yeah, so those are our contact details. Um, last word, I always put this on because I, I love it. As I said, uh, Haley and I monitor the chat during the sessions and the, there's some brilliant stuff that the students put in there. They're either exasperated or when they crack something, um, they, they, it's pure joy, particularly the <laughs> floor plan puzzle. Um, but this was from a, a from a student who successfully completed the infection control, uh, and and I put it in be, to show that actually she was saying, "Oh, this was brutal," but it was done in a fun way, um, and and it, we really challenged them, and they do enjoy that being challenged, uh, and and we think they you know they do get a lot from that, um, so it's worth putting in things that you know they're not just going through the motions, but they're you're actually pushing them. Um, because particularly if they're working in the team um, because usually they can work together and communicate to, to sort of solve the problem. 